Today on Artifactually Speaking, we look at dirt. I'm Brad Hafford, archaeologist at the University of Pennsylvania, and I'm here on location at the archaeological site of Lagash, modern Tel El Hiba. Today's artifact isn't really what we would think of as an artifact, since it's really just a column of soil. But we need to look at what it really means to call something an artifact. It's something that has been made or altered by humans. Now, that altered term here is really important. Because if a group of stones, for example, has not been worked in any way, but it has been moved to make a fence or a border around a site, well, that's become an artifact, even though it isn't really altered in itself. Its placement has been. And the point here is that humans interact with their environment. We alter and are affected by environment, and so we need to understand the environment at different points in time, especially when we're studying ancient people. We need to know what conditions did they live in, not just what their buildings were like, but what everything around them was like. What sort of resources did they have? So that's why this soil is so important. All throughout and all around an archaeological site, there are indications of ancient environment. At Lagash, some of these environmental indications come in the form of shells. Most of these indicate freshwater marsh, though some are saltwater marine and were either brought in or are indications of a closer sea environment. So one of the big questions for Lagash is where were the marshes? Now, even today there is some marshland nearby, and at some times not so long ago, there were parts of Lagash that were still only really reachable by boat. So we know that marshes are important, but we think that long ago, the headwaters of the Gulf were much closer to Lagash. So this is why soil is so important. And it's what Reed Goodman, a PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania, is specifically studying. The Persian Gulf is much farther north than where it is today. Um, and uh, in that sequence, we then have a, a transition to uh, sort of Sabka, then uh, estuary, and then delta. And so we're going to go through these cores and, and characterize them, date them, and really try to nail that sequence throughout history. The core that Reed is talking about comes from a deep drilling made just outside the archaeological site with the express purpose of gaining soil samples at each depth. With the help of RSK Iraq, a company that supports scientific drilling, Reed has drilled down now 25 meters, reaching below the Pleistocene boundary. The Pleistocene to Holocene occurred about 12,000 years ago. So what do these cores tell us? They help us to understand the environment, um, understand what types of vegetation was in the area, what types of river regimes uh, were in the environment. So when we're back this far, a lot of the rivers are actually moving north from the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, as we get closer to our period in time, we start having the sort of north to south Tigris-Euphrates movement. And you can see that transition in the types of sediments that are in the cores that we're finding, um, and the types of macro-inclusions, so the types of rocks, whether they're getting kicked out from the Arabian Peninsula or they're getting brought down from the Zagros. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a lot of information you can get just from a little bit of dirt in a pipe. And this particular portion of soil that we're looking at actually comes from that low portion about 25 meters down. It's somewhere between 12,000 and 20,000 years old. And in that, Reed is finding small gypsum crystals and pink lenses. And this means that it was very close to a shoreline, essentially. These gypsum crystals form in the flatlands near a shore, and the pink lenses indicate algae formations. It's the same sort of stuff you find near the Gulf right now, near Basra. So, at the end of the Pleistocene, we know that the Gulf was quite close to Lagash. Other environmental indicators are found within the soil, like foraminifera. So the forehead suggests marine. Definitely, I've identified two for sure, or two species types, uh, one of which is near shore and could be offshore. The other one indicates estuary. 
Looking farther up in that column of soil to the period what we're trying to understand with our excavations, the early dynastic, somewhere around 5,000 years ago, we find that the area was kind of in flux. The rivers were moving around, there was a whole lot of marsh, so it was definitely more marshy then. So even though soil isn't technically an artifact, in this case, it hasn't been altered by people, it still tells us so much that it's vital to understand. Well, I hope you've enjoyed looking at this dirt with me and trying to understand the ancient environment around Lagos. Join me again next time. I'm Brad Hafford.